My name is Rhonda Green and this is my husband Max Green. Now we both work at Amazon in Jeffersonville uh, SDF8 um, and uh, we are not spokespeople for Amazon nor are we spokespeople or spokesman or anything like that for any associate or anybody else except for ourselves. And what we're going to do tonight is to talk about what we've experienced personally in Amazon and uh, try to put this forward to you. Um, it's a little bit strange and weird to us and so please bear with us but uh, we feel that it's important that you actually see our faces when we talk. And so um, here, let me have my husband go ahead and start out. Okay, this is going to be like the first video in the series. Maybe it'll get better as we go on, or maybe not. At least I hope so. But the, uh, uh, this first one is uh, uh, about our son's uh, uh, experience in Amazon. He'd worked there from uh, uh, February through April of 2015, and he went back uh, uh, later on in the October and worked all the way through peak and through the February of 2016. And then... Uh, Rick him up a little pile of money and then he left and because it's a part-time job that's what he's worked today is a part-time job and then in, uh, in 2018 me and him both went back down to Amazon because he was needing a job and I thought well that'd be a good time for me to jump in there too because my wife and older son was still working down there yeah so me and him went in and applied for a job and uh, I got to apply and then, uh, I had to bring my uh, Social Security card and my uh, driver's license, which uh, I'd let expire, so therefore she couldn't said without proper ID they couldn't go ahead and accept my application. So I said, okay, I'll get the, my driver's license fixed, and I wish I did, and I went back and got a job. But uh, in the meantime, there I went over to my son and where he was getting his uh, paperwork processed, and about that time my, my wife. Uh, 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 came into the room because she was on her dinner break. Right. So I like had a few minutes before I had to go back into the mod, and I'm like, woohoo, he's getting a job. Yes. And uh, I was sitting there, and I was listening to what was happening. And uh, uh, the woman that was talking to him said, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't take your application because of what you did in 2017. And my son, you know, that kind of like, what, what? And uh, uh, my son said, uh, but I didn't work here in 2017. So basically, that's all I could really hear. I got a little bit sharp with her, and, uh, <laughs> then, you and, had to go back to and then I had to go back to work. So anyway, the lady left for about 10 minutes, and then she came back and said, uh, Mr. Green, you are correct. That was not you in 2017, but I cannot accept an application with your name and social security number at this time. Uh, thank you for participating. And so that's pretty rough and we left and we come back and told my wife when she got home and uh, then the next day that's on you. That Well the next day um, was a Thursday and that was my regular day off and so uh, we came right back in. I came right back to Amazon on my day off and I wrote on the VOA board and said look you know Amazon stole my son's identity are you going to steal my identity too? And uh, just kind of left it there and because I really you know to be honest I was a little bit angry and uh, I didn't really want to deal with anybody because it is so strange it's so bizarre and uh, I just wasn't in the mood and so I left it up there on the VOA board, the, the voice of Amazon or the voice of Associates, and uh, I went home. So basically, um, well, there are rules at the time. They're supposed to either contact you back within 24 hours with an answer or give you a written response, which they didn't do either. Right. Um, I went back in. My regular scheduled uh, day was Sunday, and uh, my AM at the time did not didn't talk to me until Monday and uh, she told me uh, that she couldn't talk about uh, what this individual did in the facility who used my son's name to gain employment at Amazon and uh, but that 
she would make sure that it was taken care of. And it took it took four days. Well, she told you they got to assign somebody to HR. Yeah, it. yeah. And it took HR four days to get it cleaned up. So it wasn't as simple as the, the initial lady seeing that it wasn't him and misreading the Social Security number. Right. Or which you could have said, no, it's not you in a different Social Security money. Me, I'll accept your application. It was something more difficult. It took them four days to clean up. Right. And then, but they did eventually call him back. So they called him back, and I'd got my driver's license, so we both went in at the same time. And he worked there for a while and made what money he wanted to make and then uh, moved on. But when he got ready to leave, me and him went to the HR department. They had an HR and said, hey, uh, he'd like to transfer to just part-time, though, the, you know, 20 hours a month is what their uh, part-time thing required just to keep your foot in the door. Right. And make a little money on the side, depending on what days they needed you. And uh, she said, no, he's got to quit and take his chances that we may hire him back. And I said, this won't be like the first time where uh, uh, you get him confused with somebody else or, or that didn't use his numbers. And they said, no. Well, he has a common name. And I said, but he doesn't have a common Social Security number. And she said, no, each person has an individual Social Security number, which I already knew that. But... I said, then why did you reuse his number for somebody else? And her jaw dropped and she had nothing else to say. That was the end of her conversation. So Amazon actually admitted that they did use his name for somebody else and they never had denied it and that's where we stand right now. Right. Now we want you to know that our son uh, wants you to know that he is fine. <laughs> He's got a job that he he enjoys, and he's uh, been employed for uh, what three years, two and a half, uh, a couple years anyway. Yeah, so but, he's 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 fine. Yeah, and he's he not is not a victim. It, but, he is not a victim. But we we don't know what he. The time he worked the last time before this last time that he went back, and we had this issue. Uh, he applied for other jobs and couldn't even get a call back. Right, and we're wondering now. That if uh, any employer called and asked for references, what kind of story Amazon was telling? See, now, we have no idea what they're saying, but it, it can devastate somebody with the HR department being so dysfunctional that they do such a thing. Well, see, that's or allow it to happen, and that's why we're even talking. Right. But we've been talking before and said, you know, between ourselves, and if it didn't happen to our son, and I've been sitting there and heard that, overheard that conversation with some other kid, I'd never repeated it in public again. Right. So if they would have just scooted it under the rug, and if he didn't have somebody in the building advocating for him, he'd never got a job, and maybe none wondered why he couldn't get a job no place else. Right. See, and that's the thing. If like if if we had just witnessed somebody else doing it, we wouldn't really we're like, oh, that's weird, and uh, somebody's lying. And, and well, or you it, think it, it never happens, or it's such a low percentage. But when right, it happens right. to you or your kid, it's, it's a hundred percent. Right. And you got to wonder what percentage are. Right. To really do this, and right. uh, hopefully it's a zero, or well, point zero zero zero, whatever to include his number. But we, we, our hope is that it never happens again to anybody else. Well, and of course it's upset us, and we didn't go after prosecution because he needed a job. We needed him to have a job, and at the time we needed our job, so we we did not pursue well, prosecution. Well, last didn't HR gal to... told you that uh, uh, you ain't got to change a billion dollar company. Well, well, we're not. We'll give it a shot. We're going to give it a shot, but that's that's the thing. Um, if you have difficulty after you've worked for Amazon in getting another job, or you know you come in and you say, well, because you, you can't get a job someplace else, and they say, well, no, you you know you violated some rule. We can't take your application or anything similar to that nature. That is a, a warning sign that maybe something else is happening because they didn't blink twice. It's not like the reaction that we got from them was not that, oh my God. It was, okay, and like it's happened before. Now we don't know, we don't have access to any information other than what we actually witnessed and what we actually had to deal with. And the reason we're coming out right now is that uh, I'm leaving Amazon and uh, uh, this is my way of cleaning up my station. The people I work for, I care for them and this is something, and I care for my community 
and I've been an activist for a lot of years. And well, under other videos you're going to do in right. relation to this, and right. it, and everything that you're you're getting ready to do videos on, you've actually contacted Amazon at least six months ago to let them know because as a tier one, before you can talk about this stuff, you have to let them know what you're going to talk about, and that's exactly what you did. And you've got the the copies of the right. emails on the, the website so they can verify that you actually did let them know what you're going to talk about and they had opportunities and you actually contacted exact HR which is their HR department which is uh, if you have problems in the local HR can't help you this is supposed to be like the one for all of Amazon not just the building that you're in and they didn't uh, anyway well yeah so we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up and we're gonna see you know if it helps anybody or this is maybe the most foolish thing that we've ever done in our lives but you know we've done foolish things before so uh, um, you know once again we do not speak for Amazon we don't speak for any of the associates in the facility um, or even you know anybody else but ourselves and this is what happened to us and this is what we witnessed and if there are you know I I We'll see if, if something comes of this or, or what have you, but, you know, protect yourself. It may not be you. It may be uh, um, someone using your identity uh, to have a job in Amazon because, you know, it had to come from Amazon. No place else. If Social Security wasn't, not card wasn't out there any place else, for them to photocopy it, for their files, they had to photocopy their own photocopy. Yeah. That's what uh, it was, we find concerning because... Uh, that's the only job he had to actually show a social security card for. Right. That's the only place they could have had access to it. Right. So, um... To get a picture of it, and that's what we believe. Right, that's what we believe. But, that's our experience. Um, thank you for listening, and, uh, uh... And also, Amazon has photo IDs of their employees. When they got ready to recycle stuff for somebody else, they had access to know it wasn't his picture, it wasn't his social security number, yes. it wasn't his ad home address, it wasn't anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a yeah. reasonable person would have thought of. It's all And bad. if I was head of HR and I had to, somebody in my department allowing that to go with all them safeguards in place, I would want to know who, what, where, and how and make sure it didn't happen again. But we're not going to get that from our HR uh, because they shoved well, it under the, the rug. The, I just it's exactly just, it's, the same thing. So it's it's anyway. a it's it's a bad situation. Anyway, thank you for listening, and uh, hopefully, this is some help to you.